What's up, Woodworking Nation, and welcome to Armor God Woodworks. Welcome to the paint room. And today we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different, something that's a little bit boring when it comes to finishing cabinets. Um, and so today we're spraying primer, not putting any color on. Um, we're just doing a primer coat. I hadn't really done any videos about priming before because it is basically boring. Um, there's really there's really nothing to it. Um, it doesn't really show anything. It doesn't enhance the product. Um, so, you know, I try to mainly stick to the finished coats. Well, one thing you have to remember is that the primer is just as important, if not more, than the finish coat because if the primer coat isn't right, the finish coat isn't going to be right. And it all starts with, in the sanding room. You got to sand it down good. You got to make sure your sand uh, finish is smooth and slick. Any flaw that you have left over during sanding will show up during priming and it'll show up even worse in finishing if you can't get out the flaw. A lot of the wood that we get in is processed in another facility. And so, you know, you got like chatter marks from the planer. Um, you got saw curves from the sawmill that you got to work out. You got, and you can, I can either plane it here uh, with my spiral head planer, or I can just sand it out. Uh, we use air vantage sanders. Uh, we got a 3 16 orbit and a 3 30 seconds orbit. 3 16 does more of our, you know, aggressive sanding and the 330 seconds does all of our finish. So we have a 220 pad on that and we have a 120 on our uh, 316. Um, so that's the first step is making sure that the, everything in the sanding room is taken care of. Once you get past there, you know, you do your wood filling and all that stuff and make sure you don't have any cracks, joints, uh, nail holes exposed, and you make sure all that stuff's taken care of before it comes in here. The less work you have to do in the paint room, the better off you are. Um, it's just, you know, it takes a lot of time if you get something primed and it wasn't ready to be primed. You got to wait for it to dry, then you got to resand it. I mean, you're basically starting all over, but you've wasted product, you wasted time, and, you know, that's the last thing you really want to do is waste time and material. Um, so today we're going to talk about the priming process. Um, so I've got these doors. And these doors are actually going on a big island. Got my holes bored in. Go ahead and bore your holes in these. Um, in your doors, bore them before they get in the paint room. That way you know what the doors are and you know what the drawers are. And you're not in there on your hinge bore machine after the finish is on, risking scratching stuff up. Go ahead and bore your hinges in here. And that helps me out in the paint room know, all right, well, this is a door, this is a drawer front. It just helps me separate everything and know what goes where. Um, so that's just a little tip to keep in mind something that we do um, and I'm sure there's a lot of cabinet shops that do it but that's just something that we do here so we've got these doors that go on an island it's a four piece island it's a monster um, it's five the finished uh, dimensions are five foot six and the top is going to be nine foot long and we're basically a five foot six inch square but it's four pieces um, it's got a microwave it's got storage it's got a trash can unit in it. Um, you know, it should, it's, it's a really nice island. It's got columns on the side. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. And I'll put a video up on that, um, you know, whenever we start spraying it and everything. And then again, once we get it installed. So back to priming these, what you wanna make sure that you're doing is when you're priming, that you're getting a good buildup on the paint. You wanna make sure that it's not too thick, but it's not too thin. And what I mean by that is if you're spraying it and it's too thick, you're gonna have like an orange peel effect. It's not gonna lay down flat like it would if it's just right. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, if it's too thin, it's gonna soak in so much and you're gonna spend a pile of time just trying to build this paint, build this paint, build this paint, because it's gonna continue to soak into this wood. You want a minimal amount to soak into the wood, um, but you don't want to, um, you don't want it to all soak in like, you know, so much that you have to continually coat and coat and coat. So you just wanna make sure that your uh, your, uh, your uh, viscosity of the paint is good and that whenever you spray it on there, you're getting a good thick coat. Now, you're gonna to continue to spray over and over and you'll see me do that here in just a minute. I'm gonna build up, especially in this center panel right here, I want this build up really nice because whenever I go to sand all this out, I don't wanna sand through all the way to my raw wood. I wanna make sure there's primer left on here whenever I get through sanding. So you'll see me really coat this up pretty thick. Um, sometimes this plywood has the tendency to have little tiny hairline cracks in it that you can't see when you're sanding, but once you put the primer on it, you can see it. Um, so you wanna make sure that if you, when you see those little hairline cracks or any hairline cracks in your uh, wood, 
you want to make sure that primer is in there and it is like filled up filled up all that space and that's called build up you want to build it up so that you don't sand through it on your final coat because once we get through priming these we'll take them in there and sand them down to 220 and make sure they're good and slick and then we'll put our finish on there you don't want to have any flaws in this once you get it out of the paint room and take it in there and start sanding um, so let's get this thing on our on our whirly bit on our whirly jig. We got this thing right here. It just kind of spins around. I can spin it with my feet, and so that's what we paint on. Works really great. We bought it at the IWF up in Atlanta, and I really enjoyed having that. It speeds up the process a lot. And of course, we got our paint line rack right there behind you, and you know we use that thing like it's going out of style. So we've got it loaded up right now. But um, what we want to do is go ahead and get this door painted and just show you what it takes to get it primed up. So sit tight. So once we get this first coat of primer on there, you can see that it's coated, it's nice and thick. And so whenever we go to sand this out, we don't have any problems with it. It's gonna sand out nice and slick, and then we'll bring it back in here and get the finish on it. Um, so, you know, like I was saying, priming is a very important part to finishing cabinets. Um, and if your primer it right, your finish isn't gonna be right. So just kind of keep that in mind. You need to use your primer as a buildup agent and you need to use it as, you know, making sure that it's as slick as it can be for your final product. When you bring your parts in here, normally they're blown off before we get them in. I've, you know, I've blown them off again once we get them in and I've done that. So I've blown them off two times, make sure there's no residue left on them from our wood filler. Sawdust, sawdust will stick to it. Um, especially when the conditions are like they are today in South Georgia, it's a little bit humid. So our sawdust is gonna have a little bit of moisture in it and it's gonna try to stick to, you know, everything that we're doing and it's basically a lot of might be even static electricity a little bit um so who knows but that's what we deal with in south georgia and we just learn to deal with it you wipe it off blow it off you know sweep it off whatever you want to do just make sure that your product is clean before you go to put primer on it um so that's how we prime now whenever you do your edges you want to you saw me go back one time across and then another time back across so that gives me basically two coats. As fast as this primer dries, it's almost dry by the time I go back over with the second coat, the second shot that I put on it. It's almost already dry because it's soaking into those end grains. And not to mention, it's, it's kind of warm in the paint room right now. You know, we're into May. Uh, you know, we're creeping up on, I don't know how hot it is in here. It's really not that uncomfortable. It's pretty comfortable today. Uh, but we're, we're going to have a warm day today. Um, so I want to get this done early and get out of here uh, before it gets extremely hot. Um, but you want to make sure you get the two swipes on the side on every edge. And then whenever you flip the thing over, your product, whatever you're spraying, whenever you flip it over, if it's a door or a drawer front, you want to make sure you do that same thing again. So you end up with like four coats of primer on the edges. 
um, because that's where you're going to get more extreme sanding. Um, you know, you tend to put a lot of pressure on there, and plus you've got all that soaking into those end grains where you got bypass joints and stuff like that. So you just want to make sure that you're putting multiple coats, more coats on the side than you are on the top, um, and it'll help you out in the end. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video about priming, and uh, you know, I hope it helps you out, and I hope you have a great day, and you know, just remember, always do your best, and you know, just uh, finish it out like it's supposed to be. Y'all have a blessed day.